You want to jazz on my jazz? What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> loud. It might have been loud, and I don't know if I'm overly loud. Possibly. It's really hard because I've been struggling for the past hour. It's been struggling all day. All damn day. Got hit with taxes, got hit with fucking bullshit. Anyway, I want to play this song. <laughs> Verse is that part four times. It's it's the one weird spot. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. Anyways, welcome guys to our nice jazzy uh, Avenged Sevenfold intro. We already had that. We already had that. <laughs> He went from jazz to sugar in a second. Yes. <laughs> I don't have low enough strings to be sugar. <laughs> deep enough anything. You need to get deeper. <laughs> Can we not have that on the internet just out there? <laughs> I'm yeah, only in there. I feel like your girlfriend said that to you, and that's about it. I don't have a girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Your fiance. <laughs> the celebration. How how how's things been? What have you done? You've been doing something lately. A uh, series. A series of unfortunate events. Well, fortunate events this time. Well, 20 days of unfortunate, one day of fortunate. Hell yeah! What did you do? Zach Grooves. Uh, if you don't know him, look him up. Uh, crazy good jazz drummer. He's got a YouTube channel. Plays with a band called Everything Yes with his brother. Dude is a monster on drums. In the last 19 days, I've been doing a series on my Instagram. Tagging Zach Grooves until I can get a chops lesson from him. And after 19 days, we finally met and I got my chops lesson. And it was... Just as good as I dreamt it. <laughs> Dude, you showed me that video. And he plays like 16th triplets, subtuplets. And I was like, wow, that was, and he makes this look so effortless. It you know? literally looks like he's doing no more than like someone playing a 2 4. 
Yes. But it's like a thousand notes per second. And he does it at such low volumes, incredibly mm. low volumes, and suddenly it's really loud, and it's 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 really awesome to watch, honestly. So give me, tell me the experience. What was day one? Day, I don't even know what, what was day one. Day one may have been uh, the first time I looked up like a, a drum fill that, well, no, it was more of a groove. There was a gr- drum groove that he was doing, and uh, someone, a guy named Brandon Scott made a video on it, and he basically mapped everything out. Everything notated, and you could see every note clear as day. And I sat there and I learned it, and that was the the day one of me making that series. And just for the video, I'm gonna play that little thing right now. Okay, do it. <clears throat> it just goes like something, like this something. <laughs> the look on your face, and you go. <laughs> okay, bro. Because this is exactly how Austin talks, by the way, in his day to day life. <laughs> it goes like this, something like this, something. <laughs> Here we go. So natural. <laughs> like that whenever you speed it up there you go i like the accuracy the accuracy is more impressive than the speed yeah it, well it's weird because with these hi-hats it's like oh the terrible hi-hats i understand you can lift that hi-hat up i just have it low because i like it trashy not that see too high it's very fine-tuned you don't. You wouldn't understand. That's like bargain, bargain mart sales on that <laughs> fucking hi hat. Sounds much better. Sounds sounds pretty dang awesome, honestly. It's not going up as fast as it needs to. It is heavy, and that stand is so good that it just doesn't need to lift it up. <laughs> so. Is that right? I'm going from here. Yeah. All right. All and right. I suck so, anyway. so you do you do that, and then a couple days in, give me like day five. What do you think it was? Was it random stuff? Were you covering his stuff? There's a lot of random things. There was just things that I was practicing on the internet. I think. One of the earlier day ones, I think I was promoting uh, something that I learned. I, I tagged it in the video. I don't remember it now. But it's just uh, just a hand pattern of like, I'll do it now. It's like right, left, base, base. Right, no. Never mind. I'm going to play it. Just cool. basically an alternation between the hands and the feet, and whatever you move it around the kit, it sounds really cool, but I can't really do it that fast still. I don't know, something like that. Whatever. <coughs> if you can play it faster, awesome. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I haven't practiced it enough. I don't think I've played it since that video. Well, that's a good way to practice. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's pretty impressive. So you get to day 15-ish. And then at what point did you realize he was coming into town? Uh, coming into town. Think, he drove three hours away, coming into town. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I always knew, like, since he promoted the tour, I think, I knew, but I mean, I didn't know if I was going to be able to go until the day of. Until the day of. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <clears throat> so the day of? 
So you had yeah. no plan. So you were just taking a... You just wanted to see him live. Well, it was I, I if, get that. if I got off work early enough, I was going. If I didn't get off work early enough, I wasn't. It's Luckily, same. I got off work early enough. And you and got to how many days? 19. I got all the way to 19. And he knew what day I was on, too. He watched all the videos. And apparently the whole band and his girlfriend were all watching him, too. So before, before you get to there, tell me like how, like how it was getting to the show, like where it was and everything like that. Oh, I want to know in that. Indianapolis at Lo-Fi. That venue is pretty cool. I played the Hi-Fi, which is the basement. It's weird. Lo-Fi is on the top. Hi-Fi is on the bottom. Hi-Fi is the bigger one. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. But, yeah, so, of course, it was pouring down rain yesterday, so I drove almost three hours from Lexington to Indianapolis from where I was working to You were in there. Indy? Damn. <clears throat> or you went to LA? You were in Lexington. Yeah, so it was about three hours to get there. But uh, it was a place that I played before, so luckily I knew the area. I knew the venue. And, uh, yeah, I pulled up, went, got inside. Probably no more than ten seconds after getting my little wristband on my wrist. You dropped your pick. <laughs> no, more than ten, no! no more than ten seconds from walking in and getting my wristband. Uh, he just comes around the corner, just like, oh, hey, guys. And then I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> that's him right there. And, yeah, uh, I kind of, I I don't want to be that guy, but I kind of knew where the green room was, was so I, like, kind of started walking that way. And that's whenever he was about to go into the green room, look to the left, and then saw me. Right. Maple. Maple interruption. She's a little limpy. She hurt herself. Yeah, I don't know what she did. She's a little bit hurt. But uh, so you get to the green room. Is, is this before they played? Yeah. So this is well before they played. From the time I walked in and did my ticket stuff, I would say I was in the building maybe five minutes. I was in the building maybe five minutes. They didn't start until I think like 7.20. So from... I'd say I was in the the green room for maybe 25, 30 minutes before they actually went up and played. Hmm. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> and then I sat three feet away from him drumming for an hour. <laughs> and that was awesome. That was educational in itself, just watching how he played and all that stuff. Was that him just... warming up? What? Was that him warming up? Yeah, he was warming up on that thing, the practice kit. Was it right? immensely cool? Yes. Like seeing him play that close. Like, hey, you're the guy. You're that guy. <laughs> I could have reached forward and touched his drum set if I wanted to. Because, <laughs> like, the way that they had it set up, he was almost in the front. Like, there was no one ahead of him. He was, like, faced sideways at the front of the stage. So it's like, here's the stage right here. And he's, like, facing the wall. Crowd's over here. So, did yeah. You, did you take a picture of that setup? Yeah. Because that just sounds weird. So, like, all of his... They're like, oh, it's clearly Zach Grooves. He's the one. <laughs> he, he had the Here. only microphone. He's he was the, the only one talking. Hey, this is the singer. <laughs> now, he was the only one talking. There's, like, keyboard, bassist, and then two, I think, uh, two different kinds of saxophone. Interesting, interesting. So you get there, and what happens? You didn't really explain what happened. You just said you got in the green room. Oh, yeah. Well... He knew who I was from the videos, which I thought was that was awesome because I knew he was watching the videos, but I didn't think he was actually like fully watching them. I thought it was going to be just like a click scroll by kind of ordeal. Well, if you annoy him for 20 days, he might. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking it was getting to that point, but it didn't. As soon as he saw me, he was like, that's that's the guy. Like, we're going to get you your lesson right now. Yeah. And at that point, I was just like, yes. I didn't want to have to ask. I didn't want to be like, so what are you, what are you guys doing? Can I, can I get that lesson? He oh. was just like, come on, we're going to go get that lesson right now. <laughs> I was like, sick. And you go back there and like, okay, so you, he teaches you some, a couple things like what? Uh, the biggest things that I took away from it were dynamics. Dynamics making rudiments more musical and stuff like that. Uh, some of the dynamic issues that I have is I'll do an accent like this, but then my ghost note will be like, 
whenever you watch him play, it's literally like almost a louder, loud, lower, low. So. Oh, so you're just wasting a you're wasting <clears throat> movement. Yeah, like the it's weird because it's like that volume change between those two notes. Whenever you start adding a whole bunch of notes in there, it sounds insane. It it's just like just crispy and I don't know, it it sounds so much smoother than what I do. That's what you that was your main takeaway from it. <clears throat> uh that and just accenting different notes like for my paradiddle diddles, I'd always do And I saw him over here doing I'm like Like just something like that and it like yeah, it's a paradiddle diddle, but it sounds completely different. It does not sound yeah, Sorry. it doesn't sound like a pair of little, honestly. How I used to do it? Or? Oh, yeah, that's way crisper. That's it, weird. It, the, volume, the volume difference between it being super loud, it almost sounds like a 16th note roll with slight accents when you do it your old yeah. way. Now it sounded... Like substantially different. It sounded more accurate, actually. Yeah, it so sounded that, more accurate at a dr- more drastic dynamic. I would say that's the biggest takeaway that I got from that was just like the accents and dynamics, which and is everything. I mean, if you were to get, if you were to chops lesson someone and like tell them, hey, this is probably <clears throat> what you need to work on. If clearly, it was that thing, and that sounded really good. It it was already sounding better, and it sounded more. I don't know. It just sounded more. It sounded more. It it made you sound like a more a better drummer, like more yeah. accurate or more not knowledgeable. I don't know how to say it. Like yeah. mature as a drummer. Like you're not overdoing it because you're you're not overdoing it. You're not trying to compensate for a lack of skill with volume. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like compensation. You're compensating for your lack of skill with more volume, but that just sounded like absolute control. Yeah, and that's one thing I got to practice a lot slower. If I practice that a lot slower and just really nail that in and start playing it faster, I guarantee, like, just playing around the kit with a paradiddle diddle is going to sound completely different. Like, I'm going to elevate my skill from here to here with just light hits and hard hits. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, like, hits that kind of... It sounded way different. It sounded very much different. No, I'll get it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll practice it a lot sure. more. So, how was it meeting that Groove? Nice guy? Yes. When you went to go play, were you nervous? Yes. <laughs> My face is very red in the video. Uh, was it? But, yeah, like... Uh, He's like, oh, not only are you nervous, you're around a bunch of, like, college musicians. Like, yeah. That are now technically professional because they're doing it some, outside yeah. of college. They have some crazy talent. And... In, in, these people understand music to a level that I don't, and it's it's nuts. But being in a room with all of them. All of them. Not yeah. just that group. All of all them. Of them. <laughs> and I'm just like. On a kit. I don't know what what to do, so I just started doing what I'm comfortable with. Everyone stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, like, I was really surprised. Like, like I know he's got uh, his, like, well, I don't know. He might not have like an on-camera persona, which I think is cool because like he is just himself. And uh whenever I first met him, I thought there's going to be like a little bit more jokes or something like that. But no, like up in like for the whole lesson and stuff like that, dude was really professional. Really nice and trying to help me understand like everything that he was showing me and teaching me. Right. And then of course, he did throw in a little bit of himself at the end there. <laughs> How's that? Oh, the left yeah. hand. So yeah, my left hand just isn't as good as my right. Well, just jerk off a little more with it. <laughs> like sick. Get some get some workouts in, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. That's more of what I was expecting to hear a lot of. 
I definitely believe it. <laughs> and then, right before they started the sh- uh, like to get out of the green room and go to the show, he had his phone with his girlfriend on video call, and he's like, "Hey, babe, one more thing before I go." And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he like puts he puts the phone down there in his crotch for the video, and I'm just like. <laughs> Is that normal? This is, that this is the Zach Grives that I've <laughs> I've seen many times. Oh, it was uh, funny. okay. He is a talent. He's also a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, is this music break? I don't know. Sure. <laughs> break anyways oh uh, damn it i was so excited <laughs> to keep jamming that. i know i know we're working on the jams we can still write and stuff like that uh starting to write a new song it's somewhat it's a, this is a little bit more distorted than what i would do for this particular thing but something new i wanted to make like a poppier song yeah i don't know why but i just been wanting to we have a song uh we wrote a long time ago called obsessed it's like a year old now that needs to come out it's actually not a year old yet it'll be a year old soon though in like two months i think we wrote it on i actually think it is a year old now it's getting close because february 17th is when we released that one song uh, it's time to leave. We released It's Time to Leave for Theseus. Go check it out on Spotify if it's still up. Because I don't know if... The, it might not be. I don't know if the... I, don't know I think I saw an email warning about <laughs> it the other day. Oh, well. Uh, not not too worried about it. Uh, but, yeah. It, it's. Uh, I think Obsessed is a great song. It's got a lot going on, and I'm very picky on it. The drums have to be better. That's the only problem with that song so far. It's a song that you guys would be excited to hear. I could probably play it, but I don't know if it'll come through. Uh, yeah. I think it's a very interesting song. I don't know if we have a sound like anyone, the way that at least I write music. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably someone that someone's going to compare us to, but... Spotify compares us to people I've never heard of. Yeah. Which I don't like. Because <laughs> that means we're never heard of. <laughs> That's exactly right. I don't like that. Uh, but you can't really go super far with a super common sound. I mean, you can get pretty far with a really common sound. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to imitate this band a thousand times, you could. It'd be very... But as if the imitation's good enough, it will be like, oh, yeah, it's our turn to make money off of that sound. You and know, a lot of people legal. have done that. And they have, for sure. Uh, listen to every Rise band after Woe Is Me. <laughs> uh, listen to every band after uh, August Burns Red. <laughs> every Rise band past them. But still, August Burns Red yeah. is very unique. Yeah, they're... You know? I mean, they're the only ones, I think, where you could probably start a song five seconds in that I've never heard of, and if it is them, I'll probably know that it's them. I think so. I feel like their guitar sound, their drum sound, all that stuff is very specific to them. And, I mean, they keep doing the same kind of sound, like rolling over multiple albums, Yeah. which, I mean, yeah, is nice, but, I mean, I haven't listened to anything in their newer albums. I haven't either, and they have, like, a $4 million studio. Yeah. They have they they have made a ton of money and like if someone said who's August Burns Red no one would know you know if you went to the average person yeah it was like who's August Burns Red the majority of them would probably not know I've been in the studio they record in yeah you they told have me that. Uh, like two big rooms one is a big like wood panel walls like huge room that they do the drums in. They had a really nice DW kit for that one. I don't understand why they do that. I, well, I guess they want the room <clears throat> sound, but I'm like, yeah. why would you want the room sound? Most people are trying to isolate drums. So I guess it really doesn't matter. Probably not. Realistically, it doesn't matter. As long as you have Earthworks mics, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they had one room 
It was uh, the next studio over. Literally a soundboard from here to here. Like, huge, a lot of channels. huge glass area, massive room for people to play. Did you see... In, it's like a did you see on dollars. the mixer how many channels there were? No clue. Should have asked. I mean, like, how how many channels? How many inputs you got here? I think. I just feel like cleaning that up is such a pain. Yeah. And the thing is, is that I want to know who in the band, if they all decided, hey, this is the studio we're recording at. Do they bring producers in? Uh, they have one guy that they've worked with. Um, I can't even remember the name of him. But he also drums for that uh, Galactic Empire band. Oh. Did I've or does. Whichever one. But he does their is. mix. Yeah. Grant something. In Mahara. <laughs> no, not Mythbusters. <laughs> oh. But Grant McFarlane. <clears throat> That's the guy that does a lot of August Burns Red stuff, or has done a lot of August Burns Red stuff. That sounds Not nice. sure about new stuff, but I'm sure they probably did. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't actually listened to a lot of Data Remember. Data Remember. <laughs> data remember. <laughs> uh, August Burns Red. ABR, not ADR. <laughs> ADTR. ADTR. AD- <laughs> ADT. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's. I've been uh, picking up music books a lot lately. Like, a lot. I'm trying to get to the point in which I could go out and play busking with you, which would be super fun. And I was trying to think of, like, okay, what's a way we could do it to where it would be, like, I can't know every song in the world, but I could know, like, 20 songs, 20 to 30 songs, you know? And then I want that live, that Positive Griv live amp so bad, but I had to return it. I did. I bought it and had to return it. Had to. Glad I did. I really want it. I got a a 50%, like, a 50% $50 off code. And that's higher than any other kind of, like, thing I could really get. Yeah. And I just hope it's loud enough to be over the drums. I mean, that thing has to push out some How big is volumes. It? How many watts I, It's it not say? that big. I don't remember. I'm not going to lie. Don't remember. Mm-hmm. It could be. I just need it. But it's supposed to push out clean voice, too. Yeah. For it to be that loud. I mean, it's got to be louder than that amp that you have. And that thing barely gets over the drums. Yeah. Barely. So it's like, I don't know if it's going to work well it's enough. It's just, I think in that scenario, I probably need to deaden my cymbals a lot. I think as far as the toms and the snare and stuff like that, it might be good. But if I really deaden the cymbals, I think it'll be a lot more, like, won't be as restricted. And like, you'll be able to hear a lot more of the guitar once I do that. Because those cymbals is what's really drowning everything out. Oh, for sure. I mean, they are... I don't know why they're so damn loud, but they are loud as hell. They just made symbols. They were like, all right, we got to make sure this thing cuts through and no one can hear anything else. I mean, they got a lot of shit to deal with. Like, it's got to be louder than that, which is easy. easy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, it's about the same volume. are you doing i'm getting into a beat <laughs> are you I think trying to do something grooving. I'm, trying, I'm trying to do something cool <laughs> you would never do this normally <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. that day. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> I'll fuck you, my dirty little teacher. 